In Jesus' name, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, God, that you are here today to speak to this room of women and to the person who's behind the screen. We love you, and we are so glad that you are with us. Jesus loves you, and above all, we want you to know that today. So let's give a hand to those who are here today in the house. We're pretty full. We're at another table, girls. You all are rocking and amazing, and we were all talking about the growth of our ministries across Champion, and we were just so excited in our staff meeting. And then I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, since Jesus is born, I put on this big production. Uh, not me, we. I just happened to lead it. But when you're leading something that large, it takes a lot out of you. So I always know <laughs> the day after Christmas, this girl, this pastor mama, she goes down low. Not, and I don't mean depressed. I just mean my body has to recuperate. And for some reason, we went to pick up our in-laws in another state and we drove home from there. And on the way home, all of a sudden my elbows started to ache and ache and it was so painful. So all through Jesus is born. I'm like, I don't care. You are not going to tell me and dictate this. No, you're going to lift that box. No, you're going to put that wig on. No, you're going to go over there. You're going to climb on top of the manger and you're going to put that stuff. Like I just told it what it was going to do, even though it was yelling back at me. And so I knew, okay, when I go down, this is going to be like a, so here I am down like in a two week, like just resting, getting my bearings, getting ready for 2023, trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. And you know what? He just said to me, just rest. Just quit trying. Just rest. It's all good. You're good. Everything's good. So we were talking about our ministries and how they've been growing. And I got in the car with Pastor Stephen and I said, isn't it just ironic that here's mama resting, taking a break. Don't, I don't even know, like this on my head's just wherever. And we're just growing like a weed. It's because it's not about me. It's about God. It's about his people. It's about all of you. It's about his house. It's about his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And sometimes this little girl who's made of earth, sometimes she got some hurts and some pains and some things going on. It's about Jesus. I'm just his shepherd. I'm just one of the ones who is honored to be part of this amazing church. And you who's able to be behind the screen today, we love you. And we're so glad God has brought you to this moment to be able to receive something from him. So on Sunday, Pastor Stephen rocked my socks, like just, like he's my favorite preacher, like absolutely ever. And yeah, let's give him a hand. We love him. I don't know if he can hear. Oh, he's on the staircase. That's awesome. Hi, honey. I love you. Um, but um, he answered a question for me because I just did a, um, a fa just a little Facebook thing. God laid it on my heart to just minister to pastor's wives. It just came all over me uh, uh, probably six months ago. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, I don't want to go online and bear my wares or whatever. But the Holy Spirit just really prompted me that pastor's wives need to hear from you. You've, you're a veteran of 37 years. You started this at 22 years old. Your father-in-law couldn't even find another pastor's wife in her 20s to be your friend. Like, so he really really just prompted me to minister to pastor's wives. So when I decided to do that, one of the questions that came to me was, can you talk about how you keep yourself strong under so many attacks, under so many things that come against a church? I don't know if you all know this or not, but Time Magazine, every time they do, what's the worst job in the whole wide world? No, this is serious. You can look it up yourselves. The worst job in the entire world is a pastor's wife. Time Magazine, I didn't say Christianity Today, I didn't say, no, Time Magazine said it's pastor's wives. So obviously, a question that would come to me would be, how do you keep yourself spiritually strong? And so, of course, I already know I read the Bible. Absolutely. I know I worship. Absolutely. I know there's things I do to keep spiritually strong. But how do you articulate that where you don't just say, okay, so you get out your Bible. Pastor's wives know that. They know how to do a yearly reading plan. They know that. They're talking about something deeper. And many of you who are women of God, who have been in this in years, many of you who are watching today, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about copping off three things. Okay, girls, let's read our word. We do read our word. Let's worship God. We do. It's something bigger and deeper than that. How do I articulate that? And Pastor Stephen answered it so beautifully on Sunday. And his point was this, and I want to read it exactly as it stated. It's not my responsibility to grow myself. That's God's job. But I am responsible to cultivate a heart and a life that is conductive and conducive to his growth. Woo, Jesus, Jesus, and more of Jesus on that one. 
It's not my job to sit on the front row of Champion Church and say, okay, I'm going to be stronger. Okay, I've got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do A. I got to do B. On top of everything else, I got to do blah, 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 blah. No, that's not my job. It's God's job to grow me, but I have to give him the soil to grow. This beautiful little plant that I plant, these are called elephant feeties, feet, but I call them feeties, elephant feeties. And elephant feeties are called that because elephants in places that are like our terrain we have, they eat these instead of water. If they can't get to water, they'll eat elephant feet. They love elephant feet. I love elephant feet because you know why? When I moved here, I couldn't find one dang thing to grow in the summer in this joint. I love ivy, okay? I'm an ivy girl. I don't know why I love ivy. I just love ivy. Every Christmas, the first thing I do is go to Michael's. I go to Hobby Lobby. I used to be able to go to Joanne's. I go, and you know what I'm looking for? Ivy with some flaky sparklies on it. I love sparkly ivy. One time I took Stetson to work on set at Cody Banks um, in Vancouver. We were all in the acting industry. And Stetson, my oldest son, He was invited to be part of this film. Well, we go down there and it's in this multi-beautiful mansion out on the water. And when you go down the street and I look down the street, there were these massive pine trees that had grown really, really tall with ivy all up inside of them. And the ivy, because they were so close together, the ivy grew these mass, and the ivy was like the size of your hand. They grew these twisty, gorgeous things that came down. So when you you look down the street, good Lord, why wasn't there cell phones in those days that took photos? My little crazy flip phone, I would have taken a picture, it would look like nothing by now, but I wish I'd have had an iPhone because it was so beautiful. And you just look down that street and all this ivy had just met and twisted and all came together. It was the most beautiful. I mean, you could see a bride standing there and it would be on Bride Magazine. Like, and I'm sure they probably have done that, but it was unbelievable. Like, I love ivy. I come to Yuma, Arizona. Have you tried to grow ivy in Arizona? In Yuma? It don't grow. No, I'm sure maybe you are like, you got a green thumb and you got it up the side of the house with shade and you got yourself some ivy. Could you tell me? I want to come and just look at it. I just want to park my car. I want to get out and I just want to go, wow, you know what, Ivy? You are amazing because you can grow in this crazy. I have tried every kind of ivy. You can, look at you growing. Look, you be doing good. You be going up this wall. Like, wow, like you are, because tr- for me, it was impossible. I tried everything. I tried putting it in shade. I tried well, you can kind of grow up in the house. In fact, right now I have a little mini ivy and it's gone down around my lamp. It's gone up the window, but it faces out where Jesus is. It don't face my me. It faces out the window because it knows that's where the sun is. And so it faces the wrong way. So I'm like, God, I got to find something to grow in this place because this place is brown and mama needs some green. Like I need, I need something. I need something that grow. I need something like ivy. Well, I heard about this plant. Honey, this plant is all over my yard. Like it's everywhere. I got it dripping down. I've got it. It drips. It crawls. This is the most amazing thing ever. So this started out in this little tiny container, little pot, and it drains. That's really important. And the soil was really beautiful. And really what it was, I just put this little tiny top. So if you pick it off and you stick it in soil and you love on it, it's got to have water, really lots of water for a couple of weeks, off and on. You make sure it has some good sun. Guess what? This thing is going to grow. They don't die. If they die, you have neglected it and God is mad at you because he has made, no, he has made this to grow in Yuma just for anybody who's like me who has to have a plant that actually grows in Yuma, okay? And I'm, I mean other succulents, but they'll even die too. These guys just seem to live. He's everywhere. So I took his little tiny top and I put him down in here and I gave him a little bit of water and I made sure he has sun. And guess what? It's not my job and it's not its job to grow. It's cultivated itself. It's been put in the right types of things. It has a soft soil. It has an awesome container. It drains. It gets some sun. It gets the night. It gets the day. And guess what? It's God's job to make sure that little plant grows. All it has to do is make sure it's in the right environment 
in the right container and in the right place and at the right time. And it glorifies Jesus. It keeps his head up high. It knows who its creator is. It's here to grow. It's here to show off. It's here to do something beautiful. It's here to give us carbon dioxide and all that kind of stuff that happens so that we can breathe well. That's its job only. And it's God's job for it to grow. Beautiful one, listen to me. It's God's job to grow you. And often we can get into the YouTube channels and we can get into the self-help section and it's all about what you're not doing and how you need to do it and how you need to make your house over and you need to get organized and you need to and you need to and you need to and I love all those you need to's but we can keep ourselves in such a defeated place God can't grow anything because all we are constantly is trying to do better. And what's for 2023 goals? What's your 20? Have you, you, and I get that. I love all of that. Yes, but we don't want to set ourselves up where it's all about you trying to do you, boo, trying to do you making yourself amazing and you forget who your savior is, who's here to partner with you and make you grow and make you flourish and become all he's created to be. It's not just about you and your performance and your this and your that and your checklist. Oh my gosh, you got to have those checklists done. Good Lord Jesus. Some of you administrators, I'm not talking against self-discipline girls, but I'm talking about getting into such a self-help will, such a do it all yourself, such a I'm so amazing and I'm all that in a bag of chips and I open it up and lick the salt off. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about resting in Jesus. Oh, resting in his peace. Take a deep breath and let all those checklists go right now. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says this. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Oh, my father-in-law used to get on to me. Brother Bloomfield, whoop glory, whoop glory, whoop glory, known all around the world. I'd come in, lovey, let's go for a nice Indian meal. Oh, dad, I can't today. Why not? Because I'm fasting. You're fasting. Why are you fasting? Jesus has done all the fasting for you. I said, well, yeah, but in Matthew, it says as often as you pray, Jesus has done it all for you. And then he would give me his tithing sermon on, I don't give 10%, I give it all. Don't tell me I'm only supposed to give 10%. If you look at all I've given, I've given 90 and I've kept 10 to live on. And that, I mean, and the, he, he was so shocked when he moved to America that pastors made money. He's like, you do? I was out selling typewriters and pens and all these. He would go out as a salesman in the day and then he would preach all night, go to the hospitals, raise the dead. That's the kind of life they live. He couldn't believe it. So for him, he would remind me, guess what, honey? It's not about you starving yourself to death. Jesus already starved himself. No, I'm not against fasting. I fast. Don't tell my father-in-law that. He's in heaven, so he knows. I'm sorry, Papa. I know Jesus has already done it for me. But he used to regularly remind me, guess what, lovey? It's not all about you. Jesus is the one who paid the price for you. Jesus is the one that we continually live for. Continual, continue to live your lives in him. Oh, Jesus, what is your will for me today, God? I want to continue to live my life in you because of who you are, because of your peace, because of your love, because of the joy that you bring to you, beautiful one who's watching today. Jesus is here and he's saying, just continue to live in me. What's in me? Peace is in me. Joy is in me. Unconditional love is in me. So much is in me that no enemy can ever destroy you because when they do, you're coming with me anyways. So what does it matter? Live your lives and continue inside of me and my heart. It then goes on to say, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in who? Him. Not your checklist. I know those are awesome. Even your read, your, your, your yearly reading plan, isn't it amazing? Oh my gosh, when you get to that whole story about how the sun stood still, if you've started your, uh, your reading plan, you're getting now like over into Genesis, Leviticus. I mean, you're getting now deeper and it's like, oh my gosh, like all the things that God did for his people. It reminds you how he made the sun stand still. It reminds you of the God that you serve, but it's about him. He made the sun stand still. 
The warrior didn't. The warrior was flipping tired. Oh my gosh. And what does he do? Oh, that's okay. I'll just make the sun stand still. You're good. What? That's the kind of God that you serve. He literally made the sun stand still. That's the God you serve. The warrior didn't do that. God did. Remember that. Continue in him, rooted and built up in him. How do you build yourself up in him? We know we read the word of God. This is not a don't read the word of God. I need you to understand what I'm saying. It's, but it's not about you just reading the word of God. Whoop, glory, you got to do the word of God. <laughs> That's when you're doing it in him, right? We're rooted and we're built up in him. This morning, my reading was when the apostles were praying and they said, you know what? We know that Pilate was against Jesus and everybody was against Jesus and they plotted against Jesus. And God, right now there's people plotting against us. You know what God said? Who gives a rip? Get out there and preach the word boldly. Quit worrying about you and what's going to come against you. Get out there and do what I said. Go preach the word boldly. Bye-bye. Go. You're good. You're good. Go. Go. Oh, my gosh. When you watch The Chosen, you kind of get a little bit of a right on about it. Like, you have to go out there and just do the works of God. Okay, wait a minute, Jesus. Wait, wait, wait. All we do is say in your name, and, and, and people are going to walk. Uh, blind people are going to, uh, 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 that's you, Jesus. No, Jesus, that's what you do. Uh-uh, continue in me, rooted in me, built up in me. Go and say in the name of Jesus, go and do. I'll carry that burden. I'll carry it. You just go do it. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to preach it like I hear it in my head, and I want it to be good. I want you to get it. You are rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Oh, my gosh. That is so big right there. I just want to stop and just go, wow, God is so good. Because when he's talking about being strengthened, what happens when you're strengthened in God? It's because you have been overflowing in what? Thankfulness. Oh my gosh. Sometimes in trying to do it all, why don't you just thank God that he did it all? And then you want to do it all the more because he already did it for you. Oh my gosh, I wish I could repeat that later. I won't be able to because I feel like that's right from the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read the whole thing again without stopping. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Why? Because he's done it all. You can be thankful that you can continue to live your life in him. You can be rooted in him. You're strengthened in him in the faith as you were taught, and now you are overflowing with thankfulness to say thank you, Jesus, with me. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. Whoop, glory. Thank you, Jesus. I know there have been times in my life where I thought it was over. I was a loser. I was said and done. I had given up. I was going to save all my meds and take them at once because I was in the hospital with my wig in the closet, big cut from here to here, big bag on my side, feeling like I am a loser. I'm done. I can't believe my husband's married to this horrible person. I'm deformed. The nurse even came by and wanted to ask me, or she was the sister because I was in a Catholic hospital. She wanted to know how I was handling with my deformity. I'm like, oh my gosh. And now I'm deformed on top of everything else. I'm done. Until I looked down and saw two fluffy pink slippers on the floor. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I don't have anything, but I feel I can be thankful for right now. But you provided for me through my husband, two fluffy pink slippers on the floor. Thank you, Jesus. Look around, beautiful. We don't see the blessing because we get so buried under. We get so underneath the pressure, the problems, the issues, the rejection, the hurt, the self-harm, the self-abuse, the blah, 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 blah. Oh my gosh, therapy, therapy. I don't know how good therapy is for us because it makes us go down roads. I don't know. How about if we have the therapy where we begin to learn how to trust Jesus and and go back to Colossians 2, 6, and 7 and learn how to live that scripture while you're in therapy. I think you'd get triple the blessing out of therapy if we learned some things about the word of God and we added some of Jesus on top of it of all. That anxiety would go because now it's not about you fixing the problem anymore. It's about allowing Jesus to come in and do what he does so best and so amazing and so wonderful. 
Stay thankful, girls. And use the shield of faith. Ephesians 6, 16 says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts that are going at you from the evil one. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts, arrows that are flowing at you from the evil one. My beautiful Esteli, my ed- editor says, we need a new version of the Bible <laughs> called LBV. And they're like, what's that Lucinda Bloomfield version? Because I take scriptures and add to them, I'm sorry, and I try not to do that. It just comes out. That's how I read my own Bible, because I read it to myself. I put my name in places. I put other people's names in places. I put Champion Church in the places of when I read the Bible out loud. Because when I read the Bible, I pray the Bible. And I'm like, okay, Jesus, I'm going to take up this shield of faith with which I can extinguish all these flipping, flaming arrows that are coming at me from the stupid evil one who thinks he can take me down. That's my version. Sorry. Paul encourages us to take up the shield of faith, which can protect our hearts from doubts, from fears, from temptations. And I always say this, keep your shield of faith up because you know what? It doesn't say the fiery darts aren't coming. The arrows are coming. And they're coming at God's people every day, all day long, from every direction. And the hardest darts to dart are the ones that are coming from other Christians. Hello, did I just say that? I sure in the heck did. Keep your shield of faith up, most beautiful one, because the arrows will come from any direction from somebody who's weak enough to pull the bow back, let it go. Honey, it's flying at you, and you don't have to worry about a thing because you got the shield of faith up, and it will just let those arrows bounce off. But if you don't have the shield of faith on, and it's all about you, and you doing your this, and you're doing your, and your seven ways to happiness, and your yada yada boo doo 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 da and you put that shield of faith down, guess what's going to happen? When that arrow comes in, it's got to now come out. And when you pull an arrow out, it hurts. I love that show, 1883. I know there's, there's no nudity, but there's a little bit of, but anyways, I loved it, 1883, because my grandma kind of grew up in that time frame, and she came from Kansas and whatever. Anyway, no, she was born in 19, early 1900s. But this, anyways, it reminded me of her, the way they dress and everything. And I just loved it. But in the, in the show, it's kind of like a spinoff of that Yellowstone, but it's like the early days before the Yellowstone that you all love that I've never seen. I don't know. I just happened to catch 1883. And I just loved it. I've watched it like three times. It's so beautiful. Anyways, what happens is she gets hit with a dart and it goes into her. And then the daddy says to the mom, I know she hasn't died yet, but we already know what's on that arrow. They would take the arrows and dip them in blood and let them dry, dip them in another type of blood, let them dry. And they got them to where they were so unhealthy and they were so rusted and they were so full of disease that when that arrow went in, even though you could pull it out, guess what? It's already left all the proponents to cause an infection. It's already there. Beautiful ones, just let me tell you, don't put it in. Try not to let people tell you negative things that people are saying. Try not to listen to all the nonsense. Clean up your Facebook so you don't see it all. Good Lord. I was on Facebook the other day because I've kind of taken a break from social media because like I said, when I go down, I have to repair. I have to restructure. I'm human. I've got to get my body straight. I've got to go into that room and remind myself of all the shields and chinks and everything that's on like David had to do. I'm sure his slingshot was hanging up and he had to go and remember when he took Goliath down. All the things were in the room to encourage himself in the Lord. I kind of go into that encouraging place so I get so built up in Jesus. I get my word for 2023. I mean, I'm just like I'm fired for God. You go on Facebook for 15 minutes. Yuck. Ew. Uh, what? Uh, huh? I, I, I'm sorry, but social, y'all better be careful if y'all hanging on that all the time. Goodness gracious. Lord Jesus, help us. Are we already getting ready? Oh, we have three minutes. I, I only have three minutes with all of you. I'm only on point number one and I love you and I'm sorry. I hope you've been really encouraged today and know how much you're loved. Come on. I know it what we call sin, which means missing the mark, which means we're all born into this fallen world and lots of terrible things happen in a fallen world. Oh my goodness, abuse, hurt, pain, shame. We make decisions and we're like, why am I living in this? When we know it's because of the decisions we made and we have to realize God is so much bigger than all of that. 
He knows why you made those choices. He knows why you're in the place that you're in today. And he's, I've come here to remind you of his unconditional love for you. He's so much bigger than everything. And when that dart from the enemy goes in as a child, he knows exactly who you are. He sees that little precious face. He sees those gifts and those talents and how you play and what you do. And he's like, I got you. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some arrows in you as quick as I can, because when those arrows get in, it's going to leave all that debris behind and it's going to infect your life. And you're going to have to live your life around it. So as soon as he can, he will come in as a child and he will do things to discourage you, do things to dishearten you, do things to make you react certain ways for the rest of your do. But then when you come to discover and understand Jesus, is Lord Jesus is over all of that. All of a sudden you realize I can be set free. I can be cleansed from all the sin that people have done to me, the choice. I can be cleansed of that. You absolutely can today by saying yes to your savior. The Bible just says it like this. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that he has been raised from the dead. Guess what? You will be saved. Saved from what? all of this, that when you take your last breath, you will go to heaven and live eternal life with Jesus forever and forever and forever. There'll be no more crying, no more anxiety attacks, no more problems, no more, no political nonsense, none of it, none of it. No, no, no. We will be in heaven with Jesus forever and forever. And I want that gift for you today. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. I give you everything. I don't want to do this life alone. I choose today to trust you. I choose today to give you a chance. And Jesus, I know that as I give you a chance today, you are going to begin to do incredible things in my life. I want you to open your heart today to the incredible things that I know that God wants to do in your life, no matter where you're at today. And those of you who love Jesus, I want to remind you that he's here today to not just tell you, grow. Come on, get yourself on the ball. Come on, get over all your problems. You got to get over all your pain. How come you're not doing this? How? Why aren't you? That won't grow this plant. What grows this plant is to rest in the soil that it was put in and and to trust its heavenly father to make it grow and do what it was created to do. Can I set you free today, dear Christian one, to stop trying, to stop making this hard, stop making it impossible and just rest in Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm going to have a good heart. That's my job. My job is to cultivate a heart that's open for you to do what you need to do to grow me up big and grow me up strong. And he will. We love you. And we're so glad you've been with us today. Thank you for being with us at Speak Love. God bless you.